And that's why I love the I Ching, actually, because it really tries to, to see the whole world, see those, those two parts, because that's a really warring part in our nature. And in a way, they're right. The assignment is to come in, you know, draw the architectural space. So if you had a kind of space, and then and then do gesture drawings of the figures in the space, so you arrive at a composition of figures in the space. What's important about a house are not the walls, but the, but the holes in the walls, the doors and the windows. That's what makes a house. This was done earlier. Um, where is the, this one, I just winged it. I said, OK, I need an ear and a foot. God damn it, I just do it. The, in the age and way of painting, the, the negative space is all important. And you learn that from calligraphy on up. So it's a basic notion. You know, whereas our basic notion is a positive, solid form. So we, you know, we, we're like the yang and they're like the yin. So that, that's why the, the I Ching and the Tao Te Ching are uh, like companion volumes. You know, you know, one is this kind of oracle system, so on. But the, but the other side of it is really the Tao Te Ching. And, and, and that's a hard lesson for any Westerner to absorb. Remember, the basic unit is the trigram with three parts. There are only eight possible arrangements, and that's what these these eight are. Okay, so this one is fire. Okay, but how? What is fire? Fire is going from the bottom up. Fire is yang, yin, yang. Water is the opposite. It's yin, 
going from the bottom, yin, yang, yin. Win is yin, yang, yang. And the opposite of that is thunder, which is yang, yin, yin. So you can see that this is this foot. You get some, some precision, but you don't get super realism. You don't get optical truth as a, as a primary goal of painting in the Chinese work. And, uh, but what they do do is they work magnificently with the negative space, or what's called negative space, that is, the space around objects. Yeah. Uh, the, I, I think you could say that they think that everything comes from negative space. I've got all these different branches and broken off limbs and dead parts and you know, but I still got a lot of growth going on up at the top. You know? If there's something that we can make or do, we reach for it, we grab it. Whether it's any good for us or not. We got our ink here, baby. We got it in spades. Some cow just kind of wet.
stuff here. Heavy painter. And that's what I think, and I think the chain helps us to get back to that. Well, yeah, it makes you act because you begin to take your own experience seriously and begin to kind of interpret that in ways that aren't just uh, given. It's as real as the, the cosmological constant Einstein introduced to make the math come out, which he later identified as his greatest blunder. Sometimes blunders are good things. It gets you, it gets you to, to new places. That, you know, that later on you may recognize it as a blunder. Without that blunder, you wouldn't have gotten all this. Gotten even the blunder. So it's hard to separate to say the blunder is wholly bad. Sometimes the blunder is a, it's still a blunder. I mean, it's still wrong. But somehow I did some good. The wise man does all his planning in retrospect. <laughs> Dang, I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> system on the other hand it has all these, these symbols and references and that's poetic so uh, and, and it plays it, chords in the human nervous system that <laughs> the, the even the worst of the revisionists can't can't completely subvert that. You know even Confucius could even be Confucius. Like, yeah. Oh, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> That's where all the sand Clear blue sky, work. hasn't rained for days, no, no, no. and look at that. I remember watching the guy come down this street in a kayak. Uh, I, would, I would not give anything to get a picture of that. Got a little dicey when he got down here to the big ditch. It was I'll a bet. little more exciting at that point. I'll bet. <laughs> symbolized by this, this, this box here. And that box is, is understood, uh, although I haven't drawn it in, it's understood that it's made up of six lines. And those are six whole lines. Now, and then the next one, this one right here, this one is made up of six broken lines. So there's a space in between the two. Yeah, yeah. so these are strictly opposites. This is all yang, these are six yang yeah. lines, and this is uh, six yin lines. Each, each time there's a, an opening here, that's, that's a yin line. And if, there's no, and if it's no opening, then it's a yang line. And so every surface is six lines. This 
is an inversion of this one. This one is an inversion of this one. This is an inversion of this one. If you take this one and flip it over, you get the, the one below it. Inversions in every case. And so the whole thing is made up of these, six, of these pairs of inverted or opposite uh, hexagrams. If you think of it in terms of trigram, this is uh, water over fire and then fire over water. And this is called, um, this hexagram is called uh, bringing things to a conclusion or the ending. But the last one is called not bringing things to a conclusion and not ending. Uh, lake over lake, which is this one. Fire over fire, which are the eyes or luminosity. Thunder over thunder, which are uh, uh, symbolized by these uh, kind of cubist fragmentations. Uh, wind over wind, by these soft round hills. Water over water, and this, that would be uh, um, the sexual activity between two, two people. And, uh, and then mountain over mountain, but it's simply a mountain. And then finally, the earth symbolized by the moon uh, and the earth, the flat terrain. Uh, in these two, these are the first so two we're working on these I'm different levels of symbolism of, uh, off each other. Of the human body, and showing human the human sense. Sense. So you can you change the mass here? here? I remember seeing that a substitute for the other symbol for oh. this trigram for thunder. Here the trigram, here we have the double trigram for a fire, which means brightness or luminosity as two people looking at each other. Um, here is lake, and then heaven over heaven, two, two minds meeting or two heads meeting. These were the first paintings I, that I did like this, so I wasn't sure what I was doing. I was kind of feeling my way along. Well, I do when you don't know what you're doing. I do too. <laughs> I've gotten myself into some very strange places. Well, you hand over the eyes, which is a mountain over sea. So, so it, it, on one level, it's almost a, uh, an alliteration or, or translation. For instance, this is, this is a, when we're talking about the doubles, this is eye over eye or fire over fire. And this is water over water and so forth. So the whole uh, attempt here is to is to give a, an intimate version of the E chain. In reference to, to Mondrian, I think it's okay. You know. I would say he's probably the first uh, abstract painter that, uh, not only my that did systematic Ancestry. Yeah. He's laid out a grid and like this, and then my play died. off the grid. And I realized and so that. And, and he had his uh, do's and his dumps. And, and I respect an uh, artist that has do's and dumps.
it's the right idea, but the scale is, is too big. You know, it's like it's like coming like this out, and these are like sitting back there. 